to the final section in the ruck, there is yet another compartment in the lid, which I really do. I love the, the modularity of this, this ruck. You can put things exactly where you want them and find them. Uh, really well, well thought out design. This is my land navigation compartment. And we'll kind of go through some of the things that are in here and while they're, why they are in there. Okay, so that, that concludes the contents of the ruck itself. And like I say, this thing is built like a tank. Um, I, I, I really don't think you can hurt this thing. Uh, it's seen a lot of use and a lot of wear and it still looks almost as good as the day that I bought it. Uh, I've only had to repair one small tear. Uh, it was right here. I had to sew that up. And that's another reason we use needle and thread or you just use your 65 pound Pro Glide line, that stuff you can fish with it and sew with it. Uh, the inside of this thing, the bottom is, I'm not sure what type of material, but it's, it's very, very thick, very durable. It's kind of reminiscent of a two ply tire inner tube. It's, it's very durable. So this thing is built to last and we can't have our gear breaking on us out there when we're living out of this. This is our escape pod. Uh, so moving on to our land navigation section, what I have here is I think one of the best inventions that I've ever seen. It's a little pair of glasses that go into the end of the nose. And as I get older, I find that my arms are just almost not quite long enough when I'm reading small detail. Uh, these are plastic, so you can't break them. They do capture light. So you might even be able to get some solar ignition fire out of the deal. Very light, don't take up a lot of room. And the reason they're in here with the land nav kit is I want to be able to read those features on the map. And some days my eyesight is more clear than others. So I have here a Nat Geo weatherproof map. I really love these maps. There have been tests done where they soak these in water. And there was a hiking shop that did that, and I think like a year later, they pulled it out and it was still a map. It didn't disintegrate, so that's pretty awesome. So this is basically the area that I live and the surrounding bordering areas and states. Lots and lots of detail, lots of uh, information on here as far as water sources, roadways, national forest, things of that nature. Uh, a lot of times we, we see in survival manuals or on a post somewhere people say oh you must carry a compass and you should uh, but what good is that compass if i don't have a map all that's going to tell me is north south east west things like that without that map you know we really have an incomplete picture that map has the data it has the terrain features it tells me all that i need to know it helps me locate where am i where is it that I want to be? And then how do I get there? And what is the best route to take? So route selection is important. I want to take a route that is not going to put undue wear and strain on me or the people in my party, but I'm also going to look at the security situation. Sometimes I might choose to take that rougher trail because I know there's probably not going to be people in that area and Matt will, uh, will give you all those details. So here we have a map case with a neck lanyard on it. This is handy for us, say at night time, I can put this thing on and it's, it's waterproof. And that's another thing with maps, you know, we're out there operating in the woods and we have a tendency to, to get wet. And so for redundancy, I have things in these bags so that they will hopefully stay dry. This uh, compass that I have here is a Suunto MC2. It has a magnifying glass which you can use for solar ignition. It has a mirror, which you could use for signaling or for tick checks. So it's, it's another uh, multifunctional piece of kit. And if you take a white light and charge this ring before you go out at nighttime, then you can actually see in the dark without turning on a white light source. You can see your tick marks and shoot azimuth and all that without actually turning on a white light. So that's a good feature. Inside of here, if you go to your local uh, forest service you can get maps like this 
of your area and I have a lot of different grids, different quadrangle maps of my area inside this bag. And you'll see little pieces of rice falling out. I put rice in there to help absorb moisture. And then here we have a all-in-one map tool, which is another important thing for your land navigation. So that's really good to have. And also a larger weatherproof notebook that I can use for um, making notations, uh, planning a route and all of that in the rain. So that's kind of the contents of, of my land navigation kit. You know, have the maps now. This is one of the easiest things that you can do. Go ahead and have the maps. If you don't know how to read maps, take a class on that, learn that, get yourself a compass, take a course in orienteering. Uh, it's, it's probably one thing along with signaling that I see as I try to help people prepare that they really don't take seriously enough. You know, it's not cool or uh, sexy to get into this. They want to talk about guns and knives, but, but land navigation, be able to locate, be able to plan routes, all of that stuff is, is hugely important. So make sure that you include that in your preparations.